good evening. I'd like to call the uh, regular meeting of the Clinton School Committee of uh, March, of April 12th to order. Can we all please stand and see what we I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. Uh, Superintendent Christopher. Please take a moment to uh, have any thoughts of the family of Sharon Jarvey. Sharon passed away recently. Sharon was a paraprofessional uh, for 25 years in the school system, Della Chiesa, and then 16 years at Snug Harbor, a graduate of Northeastern University, and um, a sensitive, caring woman who was cherished at Snug Harbor the teachers and certainly the children that she loved so much. Our thoughts are with her husband Paul and three children at this time. Thank you. Superintendent, please call the roll. Mr. Bergoli. Present. Mr. Demetrius. Present. Mrs. Hubley. Present. Ms. Isola is absent. Mrs. Lebo. Present. Mrs. Mahoney. Present. And Mayor Cope will be late. Thank you. Uh, a motion to approve the minutes uh, for March 15th. Motion approved by Mrs. Hubley, second by Mr. Demetrius. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Moving on to open forum. Uh, open forum is an opportunity for the community and for community input regarding the Quincy Public Schools. After giving his or her name ad and address, each speaker may make a presentation of no more than four minutes uh, to the school committee. An individual may not exchange their time or yield to others. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak at open forum this evening? I'm seeing no one. Uh, this portion of the meeting is closed. And turn it over to the superintendent for the superintendent's report. Very good. Thank you very much. And um, before getting to uh, recognizing very special uh, students that we have uh, with us, even one wanted to mention uh, Autism Speaks. We have uh, pins with us. Some of you had them already, uh, which uh, indicates uh, our support for Autism Speaks, an organization that is dedicated to advancing research and increasing understanding of the uh, autism spectrum, its causes, as well as advocacy and support. Uh, for so many families. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Keith Sagala to introduce some great kids. Thank you, Superintendent Chris Flower, and good evening, Vice Chair Bergoli, and members of the school committee. This evening, we're honored to once again recognize our talented students from, for their outstanding accomplishments and achievements. Tonight's student recognitions include Quincy High School's SkillsUSA medalists, as well as our 2017 Outstanding Vocational Technical Student of the Year. Joining me this evening are representatives from Quincy High School, including Rebecca McGinnis, Career and Technical Education Department Chair, Robin Kaplan, Fashion Technology Instructor, and Carrie Ann Hart, Health Interventionist, and our Skills USA Advisor. So at this time, uh, Ms. McGinnis will begin our introduction to Millis. Skills USA is a national career and technical organization where students compete at the district, state, and national level. Skills USA is a partnership of students, teachers, and industry working together to ensure that America has a skilled workforce. The Skills USA com competitions include action skills, which are all of the technical vocational areas, as well as chapter business procedures, job interview, and prepared speech, to name a few. The students we are honoring tonight competed at the district competition that was held a few weeks ago. The gold and silver medalists from this event will continue to the state competition on April 28th through the 30th. <clears throat> Quincy is sending approximately 14 students to the state competition. The students that medal at the state level then compete at the national conference in Louisville, Kentucky in June. Carrie Ann Hart, Skills USA advisor, will introduce the Skills USA district competitors. Uh, 
first up is Norapat Ranagasi. He was a gold medalist in 3D visualization and animation. He was also teammates with Ben Parrish, um, who was unable to be here today, but I wanted to recognize his efforts as well. Um, next up, we have Tom Chung, or Tony Duong, um, who got gold in electronics technology. They can shake hands with us and then sure. that's okay. Sure. 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 Congratulations. Sure. Congratulations. Sure. Congratulations. Sure. Congratulations. Sure. We have Terry Dang that received a silver in electronics technology. Sure. We have Chi Sao that received a bronze in electronics technology. Chin received a bronze in information technology service. Vincent Tran received a bronze medal in internet working. Anna Ruta Dope and George McGee also competed as a team and they received the silver medal in robotics and automation technology. And our last competitor at the district competition was Emma Nguyen. She competed in nurse assisting. Um, she came in fourth place, just missed by very few points um, of placing third place. Our next recognition is the Outstanding Vocational Technical Student of the Year Award. This award recognizes students whose scholastic and vocational technical achievements have significantly contributed to our school system. The selection criteria include a 3.5 grade average, technical competence, excellent attendance, leadership qualities, vocational related work experience, extracurricular activities, and community involvement. Career and Tech Ed teachers nominate students deserving of this award and forward their names to the Quincy selection team made up of Career and Tech Ed fac faculty. After reviewing qualifications, the field was narrowed to nine candidates. Those nine students were interviewed by members of the Quincy School Community Partnership, including Stephen Wesling of Wesling Architects, Phil Gay of South Shore YMCA, Lauren Pedretti of Quincy Credit Union, Bob Cook of the Granite Electric Supply Company, Diana Rose of Boston Scientific Corporation, and Janice Erler, Quincy School, Quincy School Community Partnership. The interview team members asked candidates about their career major, skills learned, contributions made to Quincy High School and or the community, and post-graduation plans. This year, a new element was integrated where candidates demonstrated their technical competence by articulating a project in their major. Each candidate did an exceptional job making the selection process an extremely difficult one. Tonight, we have the distinct honor of introducing you to Quincy's Outstanding Vocational Student of the Year, Emily Barker. And at this time, Robin Cap 
Kaplan, Quincy High School's fashion technology instructor, will highlight <coughs> Emily's path to being selected for this award this year. Thank you, Ms. McGinnis. Emily Claire Black Barker, daughter of Stacy and Jeffrey Barker of Quincy, has excelled in the fashion technology program at Quincy High School. She has also attended Beachwood Knoll Elementary and Central Middle Schools. She has many academic accomplishments, including the completion of five advanced placement courses. Her class rank is 14 out of 324 seniors. She has a GPA of 4.49, and Emily is the top fashion technology student. Her leadership and strong participation within the Quincy High School community is exceptional. <coughs> she is an active member of the Quincy High School National Honor Society. Emily is the recipient of the John and Abigail Adams Scholarship. She is the Horizons Choir President, Drama Club Vice President. She was the costume coordinator for this year's production of Hello, Dolly, which I can assure you was no easy task. <coughs> and if that's not enough, Emily is also a committee member producing the 2017 Quincy High School Fashion Show. Her professionalism and dedication to fashion technology field includes an internship as a costume designer at the South Shore School of Theater, which has led her into a paid internship this summer. In addition, Emily was an actor in, everyday, in an everyday speech program, producing various videos for children with social skill challenges. Her community service experience also includes being a teacher's assistant for fashion technology. Emily plans to further her education and pursue a degree in fashion design, attending the Seattle Pacific University in Washington State in the fall of 2017. Tomorrow evening, Emily will join her fellow peers throughout the state at the 31st Annual Outstanding Vocational Technical Student Awards Banquet at Mechanics Hall in Worcester to accept this extraordinary distinction. <coughs> Members of the school committee, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce to you Ms. Emily Barker. program at Quincy High School. A deep love for design has always been present in my life, even before I knew what it was or how to label it as such. I was unaware of it at the time, but choosing what to wear to kindergarten every day and having the opportunity to think of clothing in both an aesthetic and practical way was just the beginning of a long journey into fashion design. When I was nine, I took my first sewing class, and I immediately fell in love with exploring the different ways I could play with colors, textures, and style to create something that is uniquely me. Through the years, I've learned to express myself through clothing, and it has served as an outlet for my creative mind. Since I knew from an early age that I wanted to pursue a future career in fashion design, I've been able to stay focused and determined, and have experienced much growth and improvement in my craft. The fashion technology program at Quincy High has played a huge role in this growth. My freshman year, I was exposed to every basic concept needed to create a garment. I learned how to read patterns, thread and use industry machines, do various hand stitches, and properly construct a dress. As a major, I've been able to use these skills in each garment I create, and also build on them and learn more advanced and professional techniques, such as draping, flat pattern making, and fitting garments specifically to models. Last year, I participated in the fashion show, where I debuted my mini collection, Silver Linings. My collection consisted of five evening dresses in cool tones and floral patterns. I will show you some of these pieces from that collection now. Uh, so this first slide is an inspiration board, which is always the first step designers take to bring their ideas to life. Throughout the process, if I ever hit a block or find it hard to find inspiration, um, I go back to this board and seeing the visual copy of what was going on in my head is always helpful. Uh, what I took from this board was the softness of the flowers, the drape and the flow of the fabrics, and the cool muted colors throughout. The next slide is an image of all of my models wearing the final garments that I produced for the fashion show. Uh, each model is a fellow Quincy High student that I selected to wear my designs. And then we're sort of working backwards here and going to the final sketch that I produced for one of the dresses in the collection. Uh, the design itself is fairly basic, but there's immense detail in uh, the bodice, which features a pleated piece attached to the shoulders and neckline. Uh, here's another sketch. Uh, this is a long evening gown. The design features a simple sweetheart bodice, but it has a lace overlay that incorporates the color scheme and the floral patterns that were found throughout the inspiration board. And then following this is a finished product of that sketch. 
Um, and if you take a look at the skirt on the left-hand image, you'll see a bit of silver fabric visible in the slip. Um, and this is what inspired me to name the collection Silver Linings, um, because every dress in the collection literally does have a silver lining inside of it. Um, <coughs> Uh, and this is another sketch that I made um, for this collection. Um, the bodice is similar in this design as in the last one, in the sense that it features just a simple sweetheart bodice, but it's covered with a lace overlay. Um, and this one also features the same cool tones and sort of floral patterns that were used in the inspiration board. And then following this is um, some images of the finished garment. This piece was the most dramatic one in the Silver Lining collection, and it also had the most complicated silhouette. Um, it was by far the most technically advanced garment that I constructed, and that's why I used it as the central piece in my collection. And then, sort of shifting gears into my collection this year, um, I'm going through the same creative process of putting together an inspiration board, composing sketches, and constructing final garments. Um, but as you can see from this inspiration board, the two collections have very different moods. Um, the name of this year's collection is Deconstruction. And as you can see um, from the image before you, the lines are more structured, the styles are more casual, and the colors in this collection are much warmer than in the Silver Linings collection. And this next slide shows one of the sketches that I produced for the Deconstruction Collection. And if you'd like to see the finished product, please join us at the Quincy High School Fashion Show on May 12th at 7 p.m. in the Louisville Auditorium. Thank you. Once again, congratulations, Emily, and our Skills USA student medalist. Uh, I'd like to also acknowledge the parents and the audience this, uh, this evening joining us. Thank you very much for being here. And special thanks to Rebecca, Rob, and the Caribbean for their continued leadership. Finally, just a few um, program announcements. I look forward to returning here to the school committee on May 3rd to share and highlight Quincy's uh, CTE program advisory team. On May 12th, as Emily just indicated, our annual fashion show, Quincy High School in the Lloyd Hill uh, Performing Arts Center at 7 p.m. And I do believe we have a, a VIP package, dinner show, and VIP seating, right? Uh, starting at 5, and more details to follow. And on May 24th, I believe you have an invitation, um, 8 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., Quincy High School CT program, in collaboration with Callahan Construction, will offer our female students Women in the Trade Summit. We're currently building this exciting program for students in our, our freshman seminar program, that's grade 9. Our construction majors, grades 10 through 12, and a workshop for our CUT construction staff. So additional details will be forthcoming in the weeks ahead. We hope you can join us if your schedule allows. So thank you very much. Thank you, Keith. Thank you very much. Thanks, Keith, and uh, everyone that uh, came this evening. Congratulations. Any comments from members of the committee? Mrs. Lebo. So first of all, I noticed that you swept electronics. Gold, yeah. silver, yeah. and yeah. Incredible. Really incredible. I can't wait to see what we do at the, um, at the next level. So it's really, congratulations to all of you. I know what kind of work it is. I've seen the competitions, and they're really incredible. They really are incredible. So I'm so proud of all of you and the work you did. And Emily, I don't know what to say about you. Mm. <laughs> I do want to say, as I mentioned to Mr. Sagala, thank you for bringing the pictures. Thank you for coming. First of all, it's great to have all stu any students here talking to us, but the pictures really brought it home for me. It's, it's amazing. It really is amazing, and it's amazing that the program has been able to 
foster that kind of growth and development. And I'm sure you'll be back showing us some great minds in the future. So thank you. Thank you again. I just want to say thank you very, very much for being here. We're so proud of what you do and how you do it, what you know. You know but I think more and more we're so proud when we have our students here about who you are, the maturity level, the focus that you have. Uh, and you're so innovative and uh, dedicated to what you do. So we're, we're very, very proud of you. And I'm glad you're here. And parents that are here, thank you uh, for uh, lending us your, your uh, children for about 12 or 13 years. <laughs> uh, we love them and uh, we want to thank you very much. Parents and kids, congratulations. So be very proud. We are. The school committee will take a brief recess so that um, students can go home and work on their homework. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.
reflects the camera out so what they play with here on the table is inputted into the um, the app on the iPad um, so it's great tangible play um, they're exploring and they're creatively building with the programs adding numbers to make uh, the five so I can uh, put those two down and adding numbers Okay, yeah, so we just played a game called Clickers where basically there's questions on the board and then like you have to have this code, a paper with this code on it and the top letter would be the answer you choose and you can scan it while using someone's phone. I like this game because it's a bit different than whatever we do in class. It act, it's like you become interested because some students don't like doing classwork and it's more like an innovative way to study for a test. Our group works on like picking out the um, the writing for it to put in the literary magazine. Like we always we get lots of submissions from sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and we do, we have to pick the best, which is really hard because a lot of them are really good. My favorite thing about working on the magazine would be getting to look at all the different types of writing because when we're actually in our English classes, we don't get to experience every single type that's out there. But when people do things like this on their free time. Uh, it really shows that uh, they want to write and that writing is important to them. It's fun doing the Lit Mag because there's so many pieces that are so different and there's many pieces where they're written for people. My basis for producing this project was I was thinking that Maybe if I can combine these hormones and allow tree nuts to grow larger than they already are, then maybe third world countries and places who are in need of, um, of more plants who are, who, have, who are struggling agriculturally can find some better alternatives and cheaper alternatives to growing more plants than, um, for their families and for the people in the society. My favorite thing about doing this project is that um, how successful it turned out to be and realizing that there might be an alternative to growing plants that is not only cheaper but healthier for humans and healthier for, for the plants and the soil as well. Uh, I tested the five second rule. <laughs> so I dropped bread on the floor um, for five seconds, 30 seconds, and 60 seconds. And then after I picked it up, I measured it with a Q-tip and I put it on agar so that it uh, grew bacteria. Oh.
Brian very much for his work uh, on Inspire. And just continue if I could. I want to thank all of our, our parents for attending our uh, parent academies. Uh, we had one on April 6th. We had uh, April 10th and 11th at Central was part three of, of reading, learning to read. And um, on Monday and Tuesday, we had brain boosters with Roberta Tulio and Kim Quinn uh, and Erin, of course, our SLT members. And thank all the teachers that are there to help uh, and be so supportive and principals and assistants uh, as well. Sterling Building Committee met yesterday. So much progress in where we are with a, a new Sterling Middle School. Uh, we met our uh, new construction management team with uh, Bond uh, Construction. Uh, discussed a lot of the preparation that's going to be happening uh, in, beginning in June for the site uh, preparation. Nothing that's going to uh, be of any issue to the, uh, the building itself and our students uh, and our staff. So soon there'll be a, a community meeting work, working with uh, Councilor Kroll and, and um, Councilor Palmucci, and uh, as well as a staff presentation to our Sterling staff to let them know what's going on, what changes uh, they'll come back to actually uh, in September. And then also a neighborhood communication that's going to be out uh, short. I want to thank Jim Timmons for his uh, leadership of the Sterling Building Committee. You have our spring concert schedule in front of you. North and Quincy have already taken place, but the rest, if you can make it, you'll enjoy it. I know your schedules are incredibly busy, but if you can make it, that would be uh, terrific. Uh, our North Quincy and Quincy physics students visited Boston University for another uh, meeting with the Nobel laureate, Dr. Sheldon Glashow. Uh, the evaluations are, are excellent, and this is the kind of initiative that will continue uh, to plan for October, uh, fall of next year, as well as winter of next year, with a Nobel laureate coming to uh, Quincy or North and dealing with and uh, meeting with our kids. The kids, the evaluations were uh, unbelievable. The kids are so good and uh, appreciated so much this uh, opportunity at Boston University. Laura, you want to talk a little about the picnic in the park and rest your fingers? <laughs> okay, so um, on Saturday, April 29th, we're going to have the second annual picnic in park, which is a collaboration with the Adams Historic Site. Um, they're actually doing a lot of the logistical work um, uh, we are inviting families of elementary students. Um, we're going to be transporting students from Snug Harbor, Lincoln Hancock, Clifford Marshall, and new this year from Montclair. Um, so we'll be transporting uh, students and their families to the park should so they wish to come to the picnic. And then also providing parking at Quincy High School with the shuttle bus. Um, food services is going to be providing lunch for the day. Um, and there'll be a number of um, different events. Last year we had over 500 people on a beautiful spring day, so we're hoping um, that that'll be the same. And um, this is all also in collaboration with the planning department under the um, Farm to School Grant that we have for the USDA. So look, look forward to seeing you all there. All right, thank you very much. Second annual uh, Family uh, Healthy Choices Evening, sponsored by our student support staff, will be held at Central Middle School on April 27th. Middle school parents uh, with, with their students. Uh, parents will be a part of Drug Story Theater, a, a substance abuse prevention performance. Uh, while their sons and, and daughters will have fun uh, that evening under the lights at uh, the stadium with games uh, and prizes. I want to thank certainly our, our high school nurses, our physical education staff, our health educator uh, teams, as well as Mara. Uh, and Rita Bailey, as well as our middle school principal. So it was great last year, and I think it will be another great uh, performance there, and our parents are so appreciative. Digital Learning Week, uh, I want to thank so many people, um, with Ed Smith uh, from Quincy High School, Department Head, Science Department Head, and Maddie, uh, Roy, and so many of the digital learning team uh, put together a really great week of learning and sharing and uh, educational initiatives. Uh, and so many of our academic classroom teachers, our academic program staff, and uh, academic support staff as well, and administrative staff took, took a part uh, in, a, in a really great week of activities. I want to mention, it seems like such a long time ago, but I wanted to mention the uh, middle school swimming championship that held, was held on April 1st at, uh, Lincoln Hank, at the Lincoln Hancock Pool. Uh, so many of our middle school students uh, took place. Uh, took part in that, and uh, so many parents, well over 100 parents uh, in the stands watching, watching their kids. Uh, the, the middle school principals, their assistants uh, were there, the athletic director, Pat Lane, is there. 
um, and so many of the coaches that do such a fine job uh, with, with our students, uh, student swimmers, as well as I wanted to mention the McGillicuddy family, ever present, uh, Bob's uh, sister and Bob's brother and Bob's dad uh, was there as well to, to really take part in such a great activities and, and uh, the McGillicuddy's will be a part, I think, of the swimming uh, high school and middle school for quite a long uh, period of time. Also, another Beyond the Bell activity on that day, April 1st, was held at Bernzani, citywide, system-wide uh, activity, STEM activity culminated that day after six weeks of Saturday uh, mornings. The teachers had so much more fun, I think, than the kids at times. Uh, they were terrific. But we had about 130 students um, participate in that six-week program, so very, very, very uh, successful extended day Beyond the Bell uh, activities. I want to thank Mike Malani, Casey Guerrero. Uh, as well as so many great teachers um, that were there. Uh, our choral camp um, will be uh, next week on the uh, 18th uh, and the 20th for grades 3 to 5 uh, elementary students. And we, we had to extend. We had one uh, at Montclair. We had one site, but uh, well over 100 students want to participate. So we have two sites now, Montclair and Quincy High School. And thank Beth uh, for her leadership, Tracy O'Sullivan, and Diane uh, Doherty uh, as well. So that should be... A lot of fun. I won't be participating because I wouldn't be good with my voice, so I will uh, not be participating. Sorry, Beth, let the teachers know. Newsletters, uh, Quincy High School Athletics uh, newsletter at your places, uh, QPS Food Services, uh, Quick Bites is there, as well as Quincy Public Schools Band uh, newsletters uh, also at, at your place. And a reminder that the drama students at North Quincy High School, back to the 80s, will be on May 5th and 6th and 7th at uh, North Quincy High School, if you can be there, you will uh, enjoy it. And the last thing is I, there are CDs at your places. Um, well, we haven't met in a bit, and I wanted to make sure, kind of another Inspire for you, to show you all the great events that we have going in the Quincy Public Schools, and uh, it's because of our incredible staff, uh, our parents, as well as some great kids. So thank you very much. Thank you, Superintendent. Moving on to old business, there is none. Uh, new business, uh, students. Support initiatives. Uh, Mark Hill to present. Good evening, Mayor Cope, Dr. Christopher, Vice Chairman Mr. Goldie, and school committee members. It's nice to see you all, and we're happy to be here to share with you some of our initiatives that are aimed at supporting teens and families with healthy decision making. Tonight, um, I have the honor of having with me from Central Middle School, Kathy Mahoney, guidance counselor, Caitlin Plaskowitz, health educator. From Quincy High School, we have Donna Cartman, Dean of Students, Kathleen Taraco, School Nurse, and Carrie Ann Hart, Health Interventionist. From North Quincy High School, we have Kristen Houlihan, School Nurse, Danielle Fernandez, Department Head of Social Studies, and Ryan Hurley, Health Interventionist. And from Bay State Community Services, we have Rebecca Fidler. She's a Substance Abuse Coordinator, and we're very happy that she was able to join us tonight. There are many challenges that our community has to face today one of which is the growing epidemic of addiction and the impact and risk of addi that addiction poses to our youth and their families and the consequences of that addiction. Like other towns in, uh, across the state, we're all trying to protect our teens from the devastating effects of addiction. As a school system, we are tasked with finding ways to help our students. We have tried to think strategically so that we can work harder and smarter. I think that we and Quincy are uniquely poised to do just that. We are fortunate to have the leadership and the courage of Mayor Cope, Dr. DeCristofaro, and of course the school committee. You've allowed us to take an honest look of what's happening so that we can better take a look at these complicated um, issues and situations and help our families the best we can. I know that the professionals and um, the professionals, uh, I'm sorry, the professional educators that are here with me tonight and the community members also, also share that appreciation for you. Um, and speaking of the um, professionals that are here with me tonight, I'm confident that you'll note throughout this presentation they go above and beyond the school day and outside their role to engage, encourage, and show their commitment to the students and families of Quincy Public Schools. Thank you all for your leadership and care. I would now like to introduce you to Kathy Mahoney and Caitlin Plaskovitas from Central High School. Thank you, Mark. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, I'm here to talk about SAD tonight at Central Middle School. Central is very excited to pilot the SAD program in our middle school this year. 
Um, as you can see, SAD schools are up there. Um, they connect with our health curriculum in such a relevant way. Um, in our health class, we take a skills-based um, learning approach uh, and teach skills through the content that we're teaching. And SAD takes those skills that we're teaching and the content that we're teaching in the classroom and puts it into the hands of the students for them to make real-world decisions and to um, benefit their community in ways that they think is important. Uh, the key to SAD is the peer-to-peer -peer education. Obviously, kids can tune us out very easily, but they have a very hard time tuning out their peers. Um, we were blessed with the greatest group of eighth grade leaders um, who were trained with Rachel Strong's peer leadership group last year, and then this year it just seemed very natural for them to take the lead with the SAD initiatives. And they took the ball, and they ran, and Kathy and I are so proud of them. Okay, so hello, I'm Kathy Mahoney. Um, I'm one of the guidance counselors at Central and I had the privilege to work with the eighth grade students this year. Um, I'm just, I just you know, briefly talk to you about some of the initiatives that we worked on, as well as <coughs> um, some of the things that we did to get this up and running. So the first thing we did was we identified the, some kids that we had last year in the Friends of Rachel's group, and we came up with 23 students, and we talked to them about what SAD was and what that may look like at Central. Um, the first picture that you see here is the kids, <laughs> the kids um, gathering for their very first meeting. They worked really hard. They created their own PowerPoint to present to the rest of the, the kids. Um, they talked about what they wanted to do as a group. They also talked about what they could do at Central, and we talked about what SAD looks like nationally. The very first meeting, they had about 50 kids show up, in addition to the 23 years, so that was fantastic. Kayla and I really talked to them about how this was theirs and that they were going to own this, that we were there to facilitate and support them in any way, but it was really about um, peer-to-peer -peer interactions. The next thing we did was we registered um, for the SAD chapter, so as to become an official SAD chapter, and the kids really liked this because they were able to get their own accounts and see what other kids were doing nationally and get ideas from them. Um, they also were able to come up with monthly themes. So one of the first correspondence they got was like what you see on the right. And it was just ideas that SAD was giving to them as what they might want to focus on. So we told them to kind of focus on whatever it is that they were going to be comfortable sharing with their peers. And no matter what the um, theme was for the month, they always did three things, which was creating posters and hanging them up around the schools. And then they would also um, do some research on what it is, whatever the cause was, and come up with like facts or um, different statistics, and they would put those across the TVs. And then, <clears throat> in addition, they would come up with a script, which would be on the morning announcement. So it was a nice way for all the kids to know what SAD was working on for them. The first focus they had was on breast cancer awareness. Um, in addition to raising awareness through announcements and posters, they created bulletin boards so everybody could see. They also did a bake sale with um, breast cancer awareness. They made um, pink cupcakes and sold pink cupcakes and pink lemonade. And they also sold pink ribbons, and really it was just a way of them trying to create funds for future um, supplies that they would need. And then they ended that with um, everybody wearing pink. Another initiative they chose was spreading acts of kindness and black and white bullying. So in the center, you can see um, the kids going into classrooms. They did a really nice thing where they kind of found inspirational and motivational stories that they could share with each of the grade levels. And it was really to try to motivate them to want to help others and talk to them about um, being kind. And then that led into our yearly um, Blackout Bullying Assembly that the guidance counselors and the health teachers could teach the grades. And then they ended that initiative by everybody wearing black or censoring out bullying. And then another campaign they chose to participate in was the National Seatbelt Safety Week. And you can see here that they're presenting to all the different grades in the auditorium. They did a fantastic job. Um, they raised awareness to educate their peers about the risks of not wearing seatbelts, um, about wearing them, and motor vehicle accidents. They held a question and answering um, session which all the kids were engaged, and you can see all of them up there, which was awesome because each one of them had a part in presenting it. This next slide is just um, an example of how much fun they had creating different things. They actually went out to my car to take pictures of themselves wearing seatbelts um, and made a bulletin board out of it. And then finally, they ended that initiative um, by creating posters and they made fake um, seatbelts. And they stood outside at drop-off time so that when parents and families were dropping off, they were trying to remind them how important it is to wear their seatbelts, as well as they handed out different statistics of why it's important to wear the seatbelts that we got from the police station. 
So I'm going to end there and just um, share with you four of the students that we just talked about as leaders, and we're going to talk about some of the things that they did. This January, SAD was proud to play a role in the National No Name Call Week. Student leaders went to each homeroom and presented a story to empower students just how, just how powerful their words are. Each grade had a blackout bullying assembly with their health teacher and guidance counselor during the week. In the month of December, our health teacher's focus was on team health safety. To show how we supported this, the members of SAD made a video which demonstrated the importance of wearing your seatbelt and the dangers of not wearing one. We stood outside before school as students were dropped off for the day, holding signs to raise awareness and make sure people were remembering to wear their seatbelt as they drove by. After many successful initiatives, including Black Blackout Bullying Day, National No Name Calling Week, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, Red Rams of Kindness Week, and Seatbelt Safety, we are ecstatic to be planning new things to help our school community in the upcoming month. In May, we are planning to participate in National Drug and Alcohol Prevention Month. Our SAD chapter is also proud to welcome the Drug Story Theater on June 16th. We are so fortunate to be part of this new program at Central Middle School, and we are looking forward to the success it will continue to bring in the future. Okay. Um, um, earlier, I spoke about the skills-based approach that we take in our health classroom. So, um, I'm going to share with you a clip from my co colleague Mike Lorenzano's classroom at Point Webster Middle School, where he is teaching Smart Goals. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of a Smart Goal before. <laughs> we all have. Um, so this is to give you an idea. Um, so student. He's lucky enough that he gets them in fifth grade as well as Charlie gets them in fifth grade. And these are things that if they didn't learn them in fifth grade, would again, schools would teach sixth through eighth would teach them in um, those grades. But in fifth grade, he's like introducing it. And then in sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade, this would be something that we would reteach through a new um, content area. So every year, they're getting a skill with a new, con with a new content. So he has week. What else do goals kind of give us? Give our life a little bit of what? For opportunities? Purpose. Purpose, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Right, right. When we set a goal, it gives our life some purpose. Okay? Uh, it gives us a direction, it gives us something to work for. If we don't have any goals set, okay, um, we can tend to kind of get off track. We don't really have anything to shoot for. And sometimes when we don't have a goal, right, we can kind of make some bad choices because we don't have anything that we're kind of striving for. We want our goals to be challenging. We don't want them to be impossible. Right? We want to make sure they're attainable. We don't want them to be so difficult that we don't get to do them, okay? We also don't want them to be too easy that we don't have to try very hard. So we're not going to make ourselves better people. We don't have to work hard, okay? My goal is to get a four in math by the end of term three. Excellent. Get a four in math by the end of term three. Very specific, very measurable. I will get an ID in social studies before you first. My goal is to get a 100 on my next math test. All right. I will save about ten dollars each week when I'm 16 to go to Paris. Excellent. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, guys. Good evening. My name is Karen McCarthy, and I'm the dean of students at Kinsey High School. I want to thank you for this opportunity to share new support that we have here in our schools. Care Dimensions, a community-based nonprofit agency who offers support services to over 90 communities throughout the Eastern Mass, approached Helena Skinner and Peg Farron at North Quincy High School to assess the interests of offering bereavement supports within our schools. With the efforts of Helena and Peg and the help from Laura, our partnership evolved and our grief support groups were born. 
The statistics indicate that one in 10 adolescents have experienced the death of somebody close to them. That demonstrates the large number of students we have that have been affected by death. In my role as dean, I've witnessed firsthand the struggles our students have to go through as they process the loss of a loved one. Whether this loss be a grandparent, a parent, a sibling, or a classmate, they all presented with their own unique ways of grieving. Some would cry, some would shut down, some would be angry, and some would turn to substances as a coping mechanism. So when Mara presented me with this opportunity, along with Care Dimensions, to co-facilitate a group at Quincy High School, I jumped at the chance to stretch myself professionally and to put myself in a position where I could be a support to so many of our students. Grief really has no timetable. It can come in waves and resurface for years after the death. Adolescents tend to grieve more privately, holding on to their sadness. Their grief reactions may be misunderstood and may present as laziness, oppositional, withdrawn, angry, or maybe the student will overfunction, striving for straight A's and filling their time with extracurricular activities. Children spend a substantial amount of time in schools. Understanding the impact of grief in our schools can have a positive impact within our classrooms. Now we know that groups aren't for everyone. However, even if a student declined to participate, it remained an important experience of seeing that they are not alone in their grief, while also having their autonomy respected. Grieving teens are more comfortable sharing their experience with their peers. It is important that we provide them with that safe structure to do so. The group process began with Peg Farron and myself identifying members in our respective high schools. We were able to receive referrals from our nursing staff, our guidance counselors, our deans, our teachers, and even from other students. We were able to choose eight students from each school, and with the permission from home, our journey began. Cami Adler, a bereavement counselor from Can Dimensions, provided the structure of the groups. With the feedback from our members, rules were established and goals were set. We began each group with introduction and a brief mention of the one we lost. We would then transition to an activity designed to promote conversation and interaction amongst the members and would end with a guided meditation to allow students to process their time and bring them back to the present. I'd like to show you a sample activity this was a favorite of those members at Quincy High School. While our group was more vocal and outward with their grief, Peggy's group at North Quincy was more introverted and needed more uh, art activities to process their grief more quietly. This particular activity um, was called the question game. Cammy would put questions within the bag and members would take turns reading them out loud. At times the questions provoked a variety of responses showing the students there's no right or wrong to grief or how you grieve, and although they've all had different experiences, there were many commonalities amongst us. As an example question, what advice would you give teachers who had a student returning to school after losing a loved one? This evoked all kinds of responses as the members recalled vividly what it was like to enter the building after their loss. The members of our groups also wanted to share with you tonight quotes about their experience with the group. It's important to note that all members saw value and commented that they would recommend this group to appear. They believed in the process and they were open to sharing their grief. Grief, has, grief is a difficult topic, but by being present and available, we can show that we care. From my experience, the grief group offered Quincy High students a safe space to listen, to talk, and to release some of the sadness that they carry with them every day. For many, this was the first time they spoke out loud of their loss, and it was the first time that they had the ability to share with peers. The group gave them a means and a voice. On a personal note, 
This was such a powerful experience to share with our students, to hear of their loved ones, and the, to hear the memories and stories of their loved ones. It was a gift and a privilege to be able to give their support. I know I speak for Peggy as well as for myself in thanking Cami Adler and Care Dimensions for guiding us through the process. Thank you. Hi, my name is Carrie Ann Hart. I'm the health interventionist at Quincy High School. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about the Substance Use Prevention Week that we hold in January. Um, this is an annual um, thing that we do in the high schools, um, sponsored by the mayor. Um, throughout the week, we have different activities going on um, at both high schools. On the first day of this year, students signed a pledge at the beginning of the week stating that they will try their best to be substance free and learn more about drugs and alcohol so they can make informed decisions. The following day, substance use facts and statistics were shared during the passing of classes and some students also had the opportunity to see Travis for a speak. Travis's presentation focused on overcoming obstacles, goal setting, and perseverance. Both high schools had the opportunity to collaborate with Impact Quincy during the week as well. Impact Quincy came into our schools for an entire school day to run a substance use trivia game. Throughout the day, we rotated classes and got as many students in there as we could. On the last day of the week, our Pay It Forward mentors visited our freshman homerooms in the morning to share information and discuss substance use with them. Every year, we always have some sort of substance use prevention contest, which Mayor Koch uh, always supports us and sponsors. In the past, we've done PSA contests and SA contests, but this year we decided to change things up a little bit and have a t-shirt design contest. The winner of Quincy High's contest is shown on the PowerPoint, um, and we're currently in the process of getting Quincy and North Quincy's designs printed onto t-shirts. To wrap up the week this year, we also had a substance use fair during our lunches at both high schools. We simultaneously ran it and we had very similar um, presenters at the fair. We had um, Quincy Fire, um, Quincy Police, we had Manic Health Community, um, Laura Martin, the Substance Use Coordinator, Kathy and Michael Didi. Um, we also had District Attorney Michael Morrissey's office, the Gavin Foundation, State Police, and Impact Quincy. And we had worked with each of the agencies to kind of cover different topics throughout. You can kind of see them listed on the PowerPoint um, so that when things weren't repetitive and students could kind of ask questions about a variety of topics. Um, they were both very successful at both schools. 